Okay, so DaVinci Resolve just dropped their beta one for version 20, and it is insane. It's been a crazy day in the world of DaVinci Resolve, and I'm so excited to get into these updates with you. I'm so excited to use these tools. This is so cool. So let's just get right into it. I have some test footage here that I'm dragging onto a new timeline, uh, and you'll be able to see that this footage is from a previous video that I have already recorded. It's just plain old footage. But what's really cool is now if I want to see keyframes for, say, for example, my zoom and position, I want it to be different right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's move it this way. This is just examples. I would never edit it this way. Uh, you go to the keyframes menu and boom, you have keyframes right here, just right, right where you right in the edit page. This is something that like I've gotten so used to not having that I didn't realize how convenient this is gonna be. And having switched from Premiere a very long time ago, I forgot how convenient this was having in the edit page or at least on your editing timeline. So I'm really, really excited to see this come back. And it's, it's so intuitive as just like moving them here. So the amount of time it takes to get there is just, yeah. This is this is great. Also, you can make your keyframes pop up by pressing the little keyframe button right here down beneath so they show up beneath your clip. Super cool. The next thing that I want to go over with you that I'm the most excited about is multi-text. Now, multi-text is just like text plus, but it allows you to add different layers or different iterations of text all within one layer on your timeline. So let's check this out. So I'm going to make this say sub because that's what you're going to do right now. You're going to sub to me from watching this video. Uh, let's say I want to add another one. I want this one to be point. So here we go. We have another uh, text iteration right here. It looks like they're they're grouped in layers here like Okay, so to move each instance or each layer of point text, you have to be in the fusion overlay and then you can move each particular one. So now let's say I wanna do text box. Now text box is really neat because check this out. Uh, you get this box and your text wraps inside the box. So watch, I have all of this example text here. This is just a bunch of nonsense, right? But I can adjust the box for the, for the boundaries of the text. That is super cool. That is something that uh, apparently a lot of people have been asking for in Resolve for a very long time. So I am, I'm jazzed to see this. I think I'm gonna make a lot of use out of this uh, instead of having to do this in Fusion. The next one that I wanna show you in the multi-text is circle layout here. So when you press this, you automatically get text uh, that forms in the shape of a circle. So let's check it. So this one just says comment. Uh, can, how do we, can we move like the shape of the circle? Is that something we could do or is it just stay this way? As with your regular controls, you get like the normal text controls. You know, this is after all just text plus. So you get the fusion based controls. Oh, okay, here we go. So under layout, you get a little bit of uh, controls here. Type circle, text box, I see. Okay, cool. This is the first time I'm using this. I'm discovering these tools for the very first time. So, but I'm, I'm really stoked to be able to see like what we're gonna be able to do with this. This is, this is really neat. Next one that's super cool is let's say you have a compound clip on your timeline, right? Now, just for the sake of being able to demonstrate this to you, uh, I just made the first couple seconds of this clip right here, compound clip, but watch what happens here. I'm going to right click on this, press open in timeline, and my playhead is going to stay in the exact same position it is in this clip as I open it up in a different timeline. So watch this, the, the playhead doesn't move. Check it, I'm gonna move my playhead to the very beginning. Right click, open in timeline. My playhead stays at the very beginning. Just a quality of life update here. This isn't something that's absolutely massive, but this is something that makes using compound clips just a lot easier. The next really cool thing I wanna show you is if you're working in a vertical timeline, meaning you're making shorts or you're making TikToks or Instagram reels, whatever, when you make your timeline, it formats like this and you can push your, your viewer window way over to the side like this and get to make more use of the real estate of your screen so that it's not like it was before where it just, it doesn't exactly look right. Uh, this is just much better fitted in terms of UI for what you're getting with vertical video. I like this a lot more. This is gonna make editing shorts for the channel just a lot smoother, just a lot easier. I'm, I'm pretty happy about this. Speaking of making vertical content, uh, subtitles. Subtitles are a thing that's super popular in social media content. In the course of making subtitles built into DaVinci Resolve, uh, there are now 60 different languages that Blackmagic has implemented into the software, 60 different languages. That alone is a feat within itself, and this is gonna open up video editing and just video production to so many more people worldwide, and I just can't wait to see what people do with this. So for the next demonstration, I'm obviously just gonna go with English, because I speak English. Uh, I'm gonna lower this down to about 11, 10 or 11, that's what I usually do for uh, vertical. Keep it single line, gap between subtitles zero, press create. 
uh, and wait for this to make my subtitles on a separate subtitle track because the next thing is super, super cool. Okay, so check it out. It finished rendering this. I do have my subtitles now on the screen. What's really cool, and I'm figuring this out for the first time because this is my very first time having the beta open, is now that there's animated subtitle presets that you can add. And I hear that you can create your own presets as well. So I'm gonna go through and try to add uh, one of the presets that come built into the software onto this and we'll see how it looks. So from what I understand, you go to your effects library, go to titles and uh, there's subtitles right here and there's animated as well. So if I want to do this black on yellow sheer, I take this and I drag it onto the subtitle track and let's check this out. It pops up just like that. Now this is obviously super small. I'm going to go to my subtitle here, go to my track effects, bump up the size quite a bit here. And that stands out, that's pretty cool. That's that's really neat how you, this is just built in. Now let's try animated. So from what I understand, if you wanna change the preset or the, the template that you have put on your subtitles, uh, you just drag another one on top. So let's try, let's try a word highlight here. I'm gonna take this, drag it onto the subtitle track. And just like that, it's different. Look at that, that is freaking cool. I'm gonna do the same thing here, go into my track, make this bigger size right here. So for this one where the highlighted text follows along, you'd probably want to do more characters on a single line than I did because this is kind of hard to follow. But you can see there's custom ability here. You can change the font. You can change the colors that we're working with. This is sick. I also think I'm going to put together a video about how to try to make your own presets here. I have not messed with that yet. I have an idea of how to do it. Um, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna tinker with that and get a video out as soon as possible about it. Okay, check this out. This one is super cool. This is gonna make editing just a lot more uh, engaging, we'll say. And I actually bought a plugin a long time ago that cost $50 to be able to do this thing that I'm about to do that they've now built into the software. So I've wasted $50, but it's okay because I got use out of it in the meantime. But check this out. I have my music clip down here on the timeline and uh, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. Super vibey, really chill, good background music. I like it. I'm gonna right click on this here, press show music beats, and it's gonna analyze the track. And if you zoom in here, watch this. You can see all these lines in the track. These are where the beats are. So if you wanna cut to that, you can. Check it. I just quickly cut the end of this clip to zoom in, uh, stagger a zoom in uh, on the beats. Watch this. It's just built in being able to see where the beats are in the text. I think that's really cool. I'm really excited to be able to implement this into my workflow easier than it would be by activating the plugin, opening that up, choosing the file, just to be able to right click on the waveform in my timeline. That's really, really cool. Okay, this next one is something that I've been wishing for for such a long time. For the longest time, I've told all my friends and all my coworkers who use Adobe the one thing that I wish Blackmagic would bring in the DaVinci Resolve from Adobe Premiere is this tool that they finally brought into Adobe Premiere. I'm so excited that this is here. This is the AI music editor, or as Premiere calls it, the remix tool. So check this out. Let's say you're on your timeline and you have a clip that is longer than your music and you want your music to last the entire clip or at least longer than it lasts on the timeline or maybe even shorter, right? You wanna be able to shorten it without being too abrupt on your cuts. Check this. In your timeline, select your clip, come under to Inspector under the Audio tab, and if you go to AI Music Editor, I'm gonna do live trim here just because I want to be able to drag out exactly how long I want my clip to be. You just drag it out just like that. It'll start analyzing it, adjusting it, and check that. Is that not the coolest thing? So this little squiggly line here is where the software took a part of the music, stitched it together so that you cannot hear a cut or you can't hear any sort of blend, and it made the track longer. So now you don't have to go onto some crappy AI music lengthener online or open up a project in Premiere on another computer because you don't use Premiere on your main software just to lengthen a song. It's just built into DaVinci Resolve and I'm so happy that this is finally here. All right, voiceovers. So uh, you want to just record a voiceover directly into your DaVinci Resolve timeline without going into Fairlight and having to open up the input, patch left and right to track this or that arm the track for recording and then pressing the record button. You don't have to do that anymore. Check this. DaVinci Resolve made it super easy to record directly into the timeline. And I know you can do this on the cut page as well. It's just, I don't personally use the cut page. I use all my stuff in the edit page. So that's where I'm probably gonna be using this. But if you just click this little button right here, right next to the keyframe button, the little voiceover thing, this little window pops up right here. Uh, it's gonna ask you where you, what you want to call this file. So I'm just gonna call this VO1 
just because it's my test thing. I want this to record to track two right now. And I want my audio input to be this one right here. This is the mic that I'm using currently. So check this out. I'm going to press this. Test, test. We are testing. We are making a brand new voiceover directly into the timeline of DaVinci Resolve. This is really freaking cool. Let's check this out. I cut the timeline off there and bam, here it is. Okay, this next one is amazing and this is gonna cut down so much of my editing time. This is gonna make editing super fast for me and I know it will for a lot of other people as well. Uh, removing silences in your clip so that you don't have to go through and oh, I stopped saying something there. Uh, I'm gonna cut right before I start speaking again. Delete that clip, close the blank space. None of that anymore. Check this out. And I have not used this yet, so I'm experimenting with it for the very first time on camera. But from what I understand, what you have to do is you have to have your out point set at the end of your clip make sure your track is selected right click on the clip and press remove silence then you get this ui window that pops up i'm going to zoom in here so we could see more of our dead space now you can adjust the threshold for what you want deleted right here right so you can see this blank space you can see the waveform right here i'm speaking i'm speaking not speaking and i start speaking again and the red that you see on the clip is what it's going to get rid of so you can adjust your threshold to work around that and the problem that i had with silence remover in the previous version was that yes you could use it uh but it would cut off the beginning and ends of whatever you were finishing saying and starting saying so that made it unusable for me i wanted to have that there but what's really nice about this is that you can fine tune that space so i'm going to try that right here kind of fine tuning this a little bit you can see i the waveform finishes i'm done speaking and it picks up right before i start speaking again and these sliders right here kind of let you adjust that this is cool i'm going to be using this so you it gives you fine control over when the cut starts and when the cut stops and you can fade head and tail and that's going to fade the clips that it makes let's press remove silence and watch what happens it's going to think about it and boom just like that the silences are removed maybe there's a way of doing this that i haven't figured out yet uh for me the only problem now is making cuts in the video for that as well and there might be a way of doing that uh, if there is, I'm not aware of it. Doesn't look like there's a button here for that. So maybe that's something to implement in one of the other beta updates. This is only beta one, mind you. Uh, so there's going to be nowhere to go but up from here. The next thing I want to show you is Magic Mask. Now, they're saying that Magic Mask has been completely revamped, worked from the ground up, and apparently works a lot better than the previous version in Resolve 19 did. So check this out. I'm in the color page. Now, mind you, this only works in color page currently. This has not been carried over to Fusion yet. So as it stands right now, this is only in color page. But in the color page, you go to the Magic Mask tab. Uh, from what I hear, this is as simple as just dropping on an object and let's see what it picked up. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Got everything except for the eyes. Now, if you wanna add more, you just obviously drop in here, drop in here. It's thinking, there we go. Just, wow, it picked up my whole face here. Uh, let's set this to better. Let's see if that refines it anymore. And now I'm going to add my hair as well. So it got me entirely. Look at that. That is cool. That is really cool. I was gonna track this and then I realized I'm on the wrong clip. I wanna use just this clip right here. Let's track this. This is just a small clip I've made here. You can see that as I'm moving and speaking to the camera, uh, there's quite a few cool things going on here. It's masking pretty much perfectly as far as I can tell. Uh, now, granted, this is a pretty high contrast image, but it's still picking it up really, really well. So I think we got enough track here. I'm going to stop this and check this out. So this is everything that it was able to track. Now I'm going to turn off my selection and turn up the gain and it should go up only on me. Such fine tune, precise control over what you're selecting in your images while you're making your color grades. This is going to revolutionize video production. I'm really, really excited for this. So the next feature is really cool. I'm going to demonstrate this to you in Fairlight. This is where this is. I have a video clip here that I shot when I was interviewing one of my friends about uh, his journey through video production. And one of the mistakes I made when recording this so long ago, and you can actually go back and still watch this video, it's still on my channel, uh, is I had not configured OBS to record us on separate tracks. So it recorded the both of us to a single track. Now that's kind of a blessing in disguise because this next feature, what it does, is if you have a singular audio track where two people are speaking at the same time, it will separate them using AI. So let's test this out, okay? I have my clip selected. I'm gonna right click on it here and press AI tools and go over to checkerboard to new tracks. And this is going to make a checkerboard design of he's speaking in this clip on this track, I'm speaking in another clip on a separate track and just goes back and forth 
for when people are speaking. So let's try this and see how well it works. Okay, so this particular one didn't do a great job for me. This also just might have just been my poor recording uh, or at least poor settings in the call that I had set up. Uh, but you can see in practice, it did work. I have clip here speaker speaker here's another speaker and we go back to the first speaker this is how it works normally if i had set this up better it'd probably work better also again this is just beta one so we have yet to see how this is going to work in the future with future beta release the next one is one that i can't really seem to get working right now i have to work on this but essentially it's voice convert where you have these voice profiles built into the software and you can analyze the voice that you have on your timeline and then convert your voice into one of the voice models you can add voice models, so you can add your own voice model. You can add someone else's voice model ethically, of course, don't be doing it to anybody. But this is gonna be useful for things like ADR, where if you have a clip where your voiceover just isn't great or your dialogue just isn't necessarily audible, you can re-record what you were saying and then just change your voice tone or your voice profile to the one of your own that you have saved already. This is gonna be really useful. I wanna get a video on about this. I gotta figure out what's not working first though. <laughs> so those are all the new things in DaVinci Resolve that I wanted to be able to get out to you and let you know of right now. There's obviously a lot more uh, that came in this sub update that I just not gonna be able to get to you in this video here, but I also have to have the proper footage to demonstrate that to you with. One of the things is uh, IntelliCut or Intelli... I think it's IntelliCut. Basically you can feed a DaVinci Resolve a script, uh, give it a group of audio clips and then it will cut those clips together as per the script that you gave it. Super cool. I need to get some test footage to work on that with, uh, demonstrate that to you. But these are some of the things that I'm just super excited about. I can't wait to get working in this version of the software. And I'm curious to know, what's your favorite part? What are you most excited about? What's the thing that gets you the most excited? Because there's a bunch of stuff in this update that I think you're really going to like. I know I'm really going to like. I already really like it. So if you enjoyed this video, if you're excited for DaVinci Resolve, if you're thinking of switching over to DaVinci Resolve, if you have anything that you want to say, if you're disappointed about something, leave a comment. I want to know what you think about this, if you're just as jazzed as I am. Like the video, subscribe for more updates, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.